say that. I think he was embarrassed. He was shocked when he saw what happened. And he reprimanded the young man. And uh, I just don't know what would go through your mind to do that. I'm, I'm sorry. Somewhere along the way, I'm missing it. Well, there was a lot of uh, despicable things this week. I want you to can't listen to the headphones so we can play you some sound. This was from Monday, and it, the, the Brandon Merriweather saga continues. And this was about how he's been suspended for one game. This is fresh off missing one game. And the first words he talks about is how he's going to change his approach. But maybe not that. Take a listen. To be honest, man, you just got to go alone now, man. Um, you got to end people's career. You know, you got to tell people ACLs and, you know, that's what people need is now. You, you can't hit them, you know, you can't hit them the way, you can't hit them high anymore. You just got to you know, grow up. You got to end people's career. Even if he's saying that to make a point, isn't that a despicable comment, Coach? <coughs> stupid is a stupid sense. And I mean, that, that's what I mean. That's the know. truth. That's true. Absolutely. That's the truth, coach. The, wor the word of Dicka, straight from the mouth. And it wasn't with the intent of hurting anybody, it was the intent of stopping somebody from making the first down or uh, making the long game. But when I hear these kind of comments, uh, I'm, I'm Mr. Bill, I'm sorry. If he doesn't get it, I don't know how old he is. If he doesn't get it by now, he can never get it. Yeah, I don't think he will. I, I'm, I'm surprised that Mike Shanahan continues to deal with him because not just based on, on that coach violating the written and unwritten rules, but he's costing his team 15 yards here, 15 year, yards there. He had to be suspended for a game. Should have been the two games again, but that's another discussion for another time. I don't know why Mike, he's not that good. Well, I understand that too, but why would you take one game suspension? Oh. Why, why? And if the players association were on the right page, they would understand that they would want him out because he's going to hurt somebody, somebody else by the way he's playing the game, and that's wrong. Cool. Playing within the rules of the game is what is completely different. He's not. That's what I would have done. I would have taken the case of that sound <coughs> and I would have presented that to Ted Kittrell, the guy who introduced this suspension. Say, here's the guy. No, by the way, how much football did Ted Kittrell ever play? Did Ted, did Ted play? He was a coach. I don't know how much he played. Ted was a coach, but. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you're right there. Coaches don't know anything. Ah. <laughs> well said. Well said. No, but I think Silly makes a good point. You, you take that audio to the guy who decided, you know what, we should cut the suspension from two games to one. Because he really, he gets it. Or he doesn't get it. What was the justification to cut it down to one? I don't know. You had twice in a row? Yeah. That's two games. I would have found, you know what I would have sat in? I would have sat in for four games, and if he did it again, it's a year. And you, it really, if you're going to preach players... All right, you're the new commissioner. Well, I'm just saying. You still got a $16 million a year salary attached to it? Yep. I'm in. I'm in. Again, though, if we're going to preach player safety, then let's, you know, let, let's enforce the rules. Absolutely. What about Des Bryant? We touched on that briefly. What did you think about all the rain that are on the sidelines? Teammates defended him, but there was a lot of it. My understanding of that is that I heard what I heard. I can understand him. He's a very competitive individual. I understand that. And he wants the ball and he wants to do good. He didn't want to be showing up like that, like he was, like Calvin Jones. And I understand all that. But to me, that would stop the minute. Uh, you go to the locker room and take your shirt off. That's it. You're done for today. That's enough. I don't care how good the football player is. That is wrong. You put your coach in a tremendous bind right there. You put the coordinator in the bind. Quarterback, yeah. go to the locker room, take your clothes off, take a shower, relax, pull off, and then we'll talk to you. That's what I would have done. I'm sorry, that would have been there. Are you surprised by the amount of people defending him? Now they played some of the audio, and some of it wasn't terrible. He was trying to say we're the best. Let's do this, blah blah blah. But he sure seemed like he distracted well, a lot of his teammates. There's a hell of a lot of other ways to show it than that. I mean, you have to jump up now, and down, and, and I, you know, evidently what he was saying didn't bother the coach that much. So I. I I did not hear the audio. I, look, as I said before, I, mean, I didn't think it was the most egregious football sin that's ever been committed, but ultimately, it can't be good for your team. 
And as Coach said, it becomes a distraction. They're over there trying to figure out a way to do different things more efficiently. And you've got one guy who, I mean, don't confuse passion or you know uh, that type of emotion for something that's a positive influence. So, you know what? I, here's what I think the ultimate product of it will be: that those guys will go back to work, and it won't be an issue this week when they play again. They'll move forward. Yeah, it won't be an issue. I agree with you. And the kid will learn from it. I was just a little disappointed that he didn't come out after the game and say, look, I became a distraction for my team and I lost my cool and, you know what, I have too much respect for my teammates for doing it. Kellen Johnson became a distraction. Yes, he did. Yeah, he was good. Kellen Johnson, the Kellen um, Lions. Coming up, loss to the United Center. We're kind of good news and bad news right now. The good news is Derek Rose is warming up for tonight's game. The bad news, he's not been cleared to play yet. We'll find out the latest from Nick. Thibodeau, uh, Thibodeau just spoke, so we'll talk to Nick coming up next. And then more with Coach Ditka, Wylan Sylvia, it's Ditka Ween, we're live in Oprah. Peter Bears fans, they're going to talk about Rose and, the, and uh, what's going on in New York. Well, you know, Rose is uh, was his first game back after uh, the ACL return, and uh, you know what, it was a gimme game. We gave it to Miami, all right? It was, uh, we didn't want to ruin their whole banner-raising celebration. And, uh, you know, Derek was going to ease into it. He really wanted to give Boozer and Jimmy Butler the chance to score in triple-digit points. So, uh, watch out for the game here. We're going to whoop some ass, and Derek Rose is going to come back, and he's going to be Derek Rose. The sweet smell of Rose. They just said they're going to have an update on Derrick Rose. Well, I got the update for you. He's going to jump 45 feet in the air, slam dunk all over the Knickerbockers. He's going to jump all the way in the air and slam on New York. That's your update, my friends.